compassion bought out my offense. is offered for the soul of Sebastian Manutza, and we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Convert us, O God, our Savior, and instruct our minds by heavenly teaching that we may benefit from the works of Lent. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the whole assembly of the children of Israel and tell them, Be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. You shall not steal. You shall not lie or speak falsely to one another. You shall not swear falsely by my name, thus profaning the name of your God. I am the Lord. You shall not defraud or rob your neighbor. You shall not withhold overnight the wages of your day laborer. You shall not curse the deaf or put a stumbling block in front of the blind, but you shall fear your God. I am the Lord. You shall not act dishonestly in rendering judgment. Show neither partiality to the weak nor deference to the mighty, but judge your fellow men justly you shall not go about spreading slander among your kin, nor shall you stand by idly when your neighbor's life is at stake. I am the Lord. You shall not bear hatred for your brother in your heart. Though you may have to reprove him, do not incur sin because of him. Take no revenge and cherish no grudge against your fellow countrymen. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord the word of the Lord. Our response this morning is, your words, Lord, are spirit and life. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, 
and lightening the eye. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. Let the words of my mouth and the thought of my heart find favor before you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. And with your spirit. From the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne and all the nations will be assembled before him. And he will separate them one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. A stranger, and you welcomed me. Naked, and you clothed me. Ill, and you cared for me. In prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and visit you? And the king will say to them in reply, Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of these least brothers of mine, you did for me. <clears throat> then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you accursed into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. A stranger, and you gave me no welcome. Naked, and you gave me no clothing. Ill and in prison, and you did not care for me. Then they will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger or naked or ill or in prison, and not minister to your needs? He will answer them, Amen, I say to you what you did not do for one of these least ones, you did not do for me. And these will go off to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks to you, Lord <clears throat> Jesus Christ. Today's readings are a great uh, way in which we can follow along, especially as we are still at the very beginning of this season of Lent to make uh, a clearer understanding for ourselves of uh, what are we doing uh, to better our society, to better our world, the world around us. Could you imagine what a different world it would be if everyone treated each other as if we truly saw Christ in our brothers and our sisters, if we truly saw Christ in the poor, if we truly saw Christ in the, in the, in the refugee, if we truly saw Christ in the homeless, if we truly saw Christ uh, in, in even those who persecute us, those who are, are in our, our enemies, those uh, who we feel are, are attacking us, um, those who violate us, if we truly saw Christ in, in all people, and if they saw Christ in us, <laughs> what a different world it would be, truly. I mean, when we think about how all of our uh, certainly all of our theology about the human person it, it comes sums up right in the book of Genesis, the very first book of the Bible in the creation account that all of us are created in God's image and likeness. And that changes everything. Uh, just knowing that it changes how we should view ourselves, certainly, 
uh, in the, when we look at ourselves in the mirror and we think to ourselves, oh, I wish that uh, I wasn't balding here. I wish that I had lost a few weight. I wish that I didn't have this pimple or this uh, freckle. Or you know, I wish that my eyes were a different color. I wish that uh, whatever, all the, 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 the insecurities of, our, of, our, of looking at oneself and thinking about uh, ourself, recognizing instead, however, God made us perfectly in his image and, and God's image and God's likeness. What, what a beautiful understanding that would be first and foremost if we understood it for ourselves and then to understand it for those around us. What a different world it would be. You shall not steal, you shall not lie, you shall not defraud, rob your neighbor, you shall not dis act dishonestly, you shall not bear hatred for your brother, take no revenge, hold no grudge, love your neighbor as yourself. And do what? Go the extra mile. As the gospel says, it's a beautiful gospel that I often uh, read and, and at, at funeral masses, this gospel, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? When did we see you thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you, naked and clothe you, ill and in prison and minister to you? What you did for the least ones, you did for me. What a different world this would be. What a different society this would be. Today, we, we, the, our, 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 our country celebrates President's Day and uh, a beautiful prayer that was uh, written by Archbishop uh, John Carroll in 1791 uh, is a prayer that still holds true uh, to this day. Uh, it's a prayer for the United States and I wish to conclude my homily with Archbishop John Carroll's prayer for the United States. We pray, almighty God and eternal God, who through Jesus Christ has revealed thy glory to all nations, to preserve the works of your mercy, that your church being spread throughout the world may continue with unchanging faith in the confession of your name. We pray thee who alone are good and holy to endow with heavenly knowledge, sincere zeal and sanctity of life, our chief bishop, the Pope, the vicar of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the government of his church, our own bishop, all other bishops, prelates and pastors of the church, and especially those who are appointed to exercise among us the, the functions of the holy ministry and conduct your people into the ways of salvation. We pray, almighty, O God of might, wisdom and justice, through whom authority is rightly administered, laws are enacted and judgment decreed, assist with your Holy Spirit of counsel and fortitude the President of these United States, that his administration may be conducted in righteousness and be eminently useful to your people over whom he presides, by encouraging due respect for virtue and religion, by a faithful execution of laws in justice and mercy, and by restraining vice and immorality, let the light of your divine wisdom direct the deliberations of Congress and shine forth in all the proceedings and laws framed for our rule and government so that they may tend to the preservation of peace, the promotion of national happiness, the increase of industry, sobriety and useful knowledge, and may perpetuate to us the blessing of equal liberty. We pray for His Excellency, in this case, Her Excellency, the governor of this state, for the members of the assembly, for all judges, magistrates, and other officers who are appointed to guard our political welfare, that they may be enabled by your powerful protection to discharge the duties of their respective stations with honesty and ability. We recommend likewise to your unbounded mercy all our brethren and fellow citizens throughout the United States that they may be blessed in the knowledge and sanctified in the observance of your most holy law, that they may be preserved in union and, th and in that peace with which the world cannot give. And after enjoying the blessings of this life, be admitted to those which are eternal. Finally, we pray to you, O Lord of mercy, to remember the souls of your servants departed, who are gone before us with the sign of faith and repose in the sleep of peace, the souls of our parents, relatives, and friends, of those who, when living, were members of this congregation, and particularly of such as are lately deceased, 
of all our benefactors who by their donations or legacies to this church witnessed their zeal for the decency of divine worship and proved their claim to our grateful and charitable remembrance. To these, O oh Lord, and to all that rest in Christ, grant we beseech you a place of refreshment, light, and everlasting peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. A prayer for the United States by Archbishop John Carroll, 1791. May God bless us. sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice in his name, in the grace and glory of his name, for the good and the good of all his holy church. May this devout oblation be acceptable to you, O Lord, that by your power it may sanctify our manner of life and gain for us your consolation and pardon. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Sanctus, 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 Sanctus indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice 
of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, Our Father, who art, who art in, heaven, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. We pray, O Lord, that in receiving your sacrament, we may experience health in mind and body, so that kept safe in both, we may glory in the fullness of heavenly healing. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down and pray for God's blessing. Enlighten the minds of your people, Lord, we pray with the light of your glory, that they may see what must be done and have the strength to do what is right. Through Christ our Lord, amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Together we pray, Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And to thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Have a great day, everyone.